Lesson 2.2. Use picture graphs. Use the math test scores picture graphs for numbers 1 through 5. Mrs. Perez made a picture graph of her students' scores on a math test. Number 1. How many students scored 100? How can you find the answer? So we have to find out how many students scored 100. So we go to the picture graph and we found 100. It's right here. Now next to 100, we see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We see 5 stars, but we don't know what the stars stand for. So we go to the key at the bottom of the picture graph. The key always tells us what the symbols stand for. So in this case, what the stars stand for. So it says each star equals four students. So when we count these stars, we have to count by four because each one represents four students. So counting by four, four, eight, 12, 16, 20. So to find the number of students who scored 100, we count each star as four students. So 20 students scored 100. Number two, what does half of a star stand for? So we go back to our picture graph. We see that a whole star stands for four students. So half of a star would have to be half of four. Two is half of four. So that means two, each half stands for two students. Because we know that the whole star stands for four students. So half of a star has to stand for half of two and two is half of four. Two twos would make four. Number three, how many students in all scored 100 or 95? So let's go back to our picture graph. We already know that 20 students scored 100 now we have to count how many students scored 95. So again, each star stands for four students. So we have to count by four. So four, eight, 12. So we had 12 students score 95. And we already know that 20 students scored 100. So if we add these numbers up, 20 plus 12, you start with a ones place, zero plus two is two, and in the ones place, two plus one is three. So how many students in all scored 100 or 95? 32 students in all. Number four, suppose the students who scored 85 and 90 on the test take the test again and score 95. How many stars would you have to add to the picture graph next to 95? So let's go back to our picture graph and we're gonna pretend the students who scored 85 and 90 retake it and they score 95. So there were one, there were, four, remember we count by fours. So there were four, eight, 12. Since this is a half, we would count it by two. So 12 plus two would be 14. And this is just four. So now if they took the test again and they scored a 95, 
we would have to add one, two, three, four, four and a half stars. So we would have to add four and a half stars. One, two, three. So we have four stars and we make a half. So back to our question, how many stars would you have to add to the picture graph next to 95? We would have to add one, two, three, four, four and a half stars. Number five, if two more students took the math test and both made a score of 80, what would the picture graph look like? So if two more students took the test and scored 80, we would have to add a slot for 80. We would have to add 80 on our picture graph and make it a half. So we would add right eighty on the picture graph. and draw half a star. And we draw half a star because it was two more students. And to get a full star, we would need four students. Number six, explain what you can tell just by comparing the symbols in a picture graph. By comparing a symbol, the symbols in a picture graph, we can tell how many items we can tell the number of items And which had the most or least Number one, Karen asked her friends to name their favorite type of dog. Looking at the, the picture graph, we see Retriever, Poodle, and the Terrier. And when we look down at the key, 
each bone equals two people. So how many people chose poodles? So we go to the poodles and we know since each bone equals two, we'll be counting by two. So this is two, four, six. So how many people chose poodles? Six people. Number two, Henry made a picture graph to show what topping people like on their pizza. This is the key. Each pizza equals six people. What does these two pizzas stand for? If each people equals if each pizza equals six people, then we know we have to count by sixes. So this would be six, and another six would make twelve. Twelve people. Number three, estimate the sum. Let's round to the nearest hundred. So 523, if we're rounding to the nearest hundred, would be between 500 and 600. But 523 is closest to 500. Now 295 is between 200 and 300 but it is closer to 300. Now let's add them to estimate. Zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus zero is zero. Five plus three is eight. So our estimate is 800. So we know estimate means close to the answer. And the word sum means the answer to an addition problem. But if we solve the actual problem, let's see if we get an answer close to the estimate. 3 plus 5 equals 8. 2 plus 9 equals 11. We carry our 1. 1 plus 5 equals 6. 6 plus 2 equals 8. So the exact answer is 818. And our estimate was 800. So 818. Number four, estimate the difference. 610 minus 187. So 610 is already a 10. So it's 610, it's already a 10. So let's round 187 to also to a 10. So if this remains 610 and 187, if we're rounding it to the nearest 10, it would be between 180 and 190. It would be closer to 190. So we subtract and estimate. We already know that means find something close to the answer. And the word different means the answer to a subtraction problem. So once we do our subtracting, 0 minus 0 equals 0. 1 minus 9, we can't do that, so we have to borrow from the hundreds place. We take 1 away from the 6, it becomes a 5. And this 1 becomes an 11. 11 minus 9 equals 2. And in the hundreds place, it's no longer 6 minus 1, it is 5 minus 1. 5 minus 1 equals 4. So our estimate is 420. Now, if we wanted to find the exact answer, we would subtract 0 minus 7. We can't do that. So this 0 borrows from the tens place. It borrows from the 1. It takes 1 away from the 1. The 1 becomes a 0. And now this 0 can become a 10. 10 minus 7 is 3. Now we have one, it's no longer one minus eight, it is zero minus eight. We can't do that. So this zero has to borrow from the hundreds place. It takes one away from this six. This six becomes a five. And this zero becomes a 10. 10 minus eight is two. 
and it's no longer six minus one, it's five minus one. Five minus one is four. So the exact answer is 423, but they asked for an estimate. And when we look for an estimate, we find something close to the answer. So for number four, we rounded to the nearest tens. And number three, we added to the nearest hundreds. We get to pick what we want to round to. Number five, what is 871 rounded to the nearest 10? So we have 871 and we round it to the nearest 10. 871 is between 870 and 880, but it is closer to 870. So 871 rounded to the nearest 10 is 870. Number six, what is 473 rounded to the nearest 100? So we have 473, and this time they want us to round to the nearest 100. 473 is between 400 and 500, but it is a lot closer to 500. So 473 rounds to 500 when rounding to the nearest 100. 